Hello. I've got one asleep behind me and only one playing, so yay. It's getting to be the afternoon, so I'm losing light, but... Hello, YouTubers! I hope you're having a fantastic day today. And I hope that you feel safe. I want this to be a safe place for you to explore anything and everything. All of it. Continue to ask questions about all of it. All possibilities. Pregnancy or no pregnancy. So before we start, I wanted to cover my intentions. I'm not here to tell you what to think or what not to think. And I'm not here to tell you what to believe or what not to believe. I'm hoping and maybe even if you would let me teach you how to think for yourself, all by yourself. My purpose is to provide honest truth about bodily systems and how your body functions as well as relate conditions and diseases that have not been previously explored and relate those to the signs and symptoms of pregnancy progressing past the rare 12 month gestation. I'm looking at the symptoms of protracted gestation realistically and critically. That's okay. Examining easily looked over complications of common illnesses. If you want to believe you are pregnant, or you think you are pregnant, it is not my purpose to tell you otherwise. It is your life, it is your body. It hurts nobody but yourself. You, nobody knows your body like you do, and that's true. I'm only providing options, alternatives, and ideas to those that are seeking it, men and women alike. If you believe you are experiencing an extended gestational cryptic pregnancy, my advice is to document, document, document. If and when you have the baby, be prepared to provide proof of this rare occurrence to the medical field and scientific community alike. So with that said, the title of this video is Extended Gestational Pregnancy, the Incarcerated Uterus. Let's cover a well-studied complication in pregnancy. There's a lot known about this particular complication and it is widely studied, analyzed, and written about all over the world. The incarcerated uterus. So, uterine incarceration is an obstetrical complication whereby a growing retroverted uterus becomes wedged into the pelvis after the first trimester of pregnancy. When the uterus is tilted backwards, let's get you a picture here. When the uterus is tilted backwards, this is normal. It's pointing towards the belly button. This is abnormal. It's pointing towards the colon. Oops. It is considered to be retroverted when it's tilted backwards. This situation is common and regarded a normal variation. I, for one, have been diagnosed with a retroverted uterus before the birth of both my boys. I know now it's not retroverted anymore. It has been estimated that about 15% of pregnancies begin in a retroverted uterus. Normally during the first trimester, the growing uterus changes spontaneously to an antiverted position, thus allowing expansion of the enlarging uterus to the abdomen. The cervix is then inferior to the body of the uterus, thus the presence of an early pregnancy in a retroverted uterus is not considered a problem. On rare occasions, though, the uterus can fail to become antiverted, and the pregnancy can continue to expand in the retroverted uterus position within the confines of the pelvis. By about 14 weeks, the size of the uterus fills out most of the pelvis, pushing up the cervix. At this point, the uterus may get trapped below the sacral, promontory, and sphincters, with 
Further growth, the pregnant woman may experience lower abdominal and pelvic pain, back pain, and difficulty, even inability to void. As the bladder is pushed up and its outflow becomes obstructed, constipation can be encountered. The frequency of this complication has been estimated in about 1 in 3,000 pregnancies. So it's pretty rare. In real life, I've never heard of anybody who has experienced an incarcerated uterus. I know quite a bit of women who have been pregnant, are pregnant, have had several pregnancies, and nobody I know of ever has ever experienced one, and that just shows you how rare it really is. The diagnosis of it is pretty easily done, and I would expe I would expect that those you know complications would be very alarming and a reason to go into the doctor and this is something that's easily diagnosed through an ultrasound because all they have to do is look at the position of the cervix the position of the fundus the position of the bladder and they're able to look at and they're able to fix it um they can move the uterus into an antiverted position so that the uterus can continue to grow in a healthy position and the mother doesn't experience any more um, adverse symptoms. So there's a number of reasons um, of situations that may interfere with the natural process that would antivert a retroverted uterus during pregnancy, and those are pelvic, pelvic adhesions, endometriosis, uterine malformations, and pelvic tumors, as well as lyomyomata, so spontaneous resolution of the condition does usually occur during the second trimester, like I've emphasized before. However, an unresolved incarcerated uterus can lead to further pain, vaginal bleeding, loss of pregnancy, and premature delivery. So this is a very, very important complication and should be monitored by a doctor. Yeah, also, the uterus may develop a uterine Good saculation. Good night. Going Mimi? Mm -hmm. Okay, go lay down. Love you. Love you. Also, the uterus may develop a uterine saculation. That is a part of its back wall softens like an aneurysm and allows expansion of the fetus into the abdomen and it also risks you're, there's a higher risk of uterine rupture. And you can experience further urinary complications such as cystitis and bladder distension it could eventually lead to rupture of the bladder. So these are all reasons that would bring you into the doctor and then you would eventually get a... Uh, what is the word I'm looking <laughs> Completely blanked. Woo! You would get a um, sonography and they would see the baby and they would confirm your pregnancy. So a pregnant woman with an incarcerated uterus would present in the emergency room even as early as eight, seven to eight weeks. And they would, um, upon diagnosis, take steps to manually position the uterus into an antiverted position because they would be able to confirm the pregnancy through an ultrasound. And them going into the, the doctor or going into the emergency room so soon because they experience such, I mean, these are not usual things that you experience um, during a regular pregnancy. I mean, these would be, it, I would imagine it'd be very, 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 very painful to feel your uterus being trapped in your pelvic cavity and it grows every single day. So I. So what are the holes in this theory of an incarcerated uterus causing an extended gestational pregnancy, you ask? There are quite a few. You want to watch Just In Time? Let me go put on his show so he can take a nap. One second. Okay. So there are quite a few holes in this theory. Um, from the cryptic pregnancy website cryptic pregnancy a hidden blessing they state or the moderator of this website states 
that ultrasounds can be negative even with a normal pregnancy. However, when the HCG test says there is a baby, typically the ultrasound technician will do everything that they can to find it. An overwhelming amount of ultrasounds in cryptic pregnancy are negative due to a number of reasons. And these are the reasons they say a cryptic pregnancy ultrasound will be negative or can be is a retroverted or tipped uterus, a uterus that goes behind the intestines during pregnancy, an incarcerated uterus, bicornate uterus, and abdominal scarring. This is pure fabrication based upon opinion and has no absolutely no validation for the claim that the tech won't look for a baby if no HCG is found. In the medical setting, if the urine and blood are negative for pregnancy, then the doctor orders an ultrasound. Usually they order a pelvic and abdominal ultrasound. It is now up to the technician to find a possible baby. If you are a woman and are sexually active, it is always a possibility that you could be pregnant. This is the technician's responsibility to know, and they are trained to know this. If no baby is found, then it is up to them to find out what else could be causing the symptoms or help the doctor rule out any possible diagnosis. The technician will look for fibroids, cysts, tumors, blood restriction, or anything else on the organs. They have to diligently look for these possible findings. They are basically the doctor's like right hand without them performing this test the way it's supposed to be performed. There's no reason for the doctor to have ordered it. So this test or these tests take at least 15 to 20 minutes, if not longer in order for the technician to get a good hard look at everything within this region. They don't just look for a baby, say, oops, no baby, get down, get out. That's not what happens. We have to think about this realistically. So I want to ask, how does a bicornate uterus make finding a baby in ultrasound difficult after the second trimester? A bicornate uterus is only a different shape, not a different position. So this kind of uterus does not really have an effect on finding baby in an abdominal or a transvaginal ultrasound after the second trimester. And there are lots of women who have bicornate uteruses that baby was found at six, seven, eight weeks pregnant very easily on an abdominal ultrasound. And we've already discovered and thoroughly investigated how the intestines would not and could not go in front of the uterus without both mother and baby experiencing negative side effects. If something like this did happen, the mother would go to the doctor. The doctor would then diagnose her and then have to perform surgery in order for the pregnancy and the mother to survive. I mean, the, for the baby and the mother to survive and the pregnancy to progress healthily. And then it's also important to note that a C-section would never be performed. It would never even be a procedure if there was even a slight chance of the intestines being in front of the uterine wall during pregnancy and delivery. If the doctor sliced into a mother's intestines while trying to deliver her baby, it would highly complicate the delivery because feces would be everywhere. C-sections wouldn't even be a procedure if there was a chance of the intestines being in front of the uterine wall, being in front of the, being in between the abdominal wall and uterine wall during pregnancy. And abdominal scarring. Yes, Leo. You see me? I see you. No, nobody's getting you. Okay. Abdominal scarring just makes getting a super clear picture of baby a little harder, but it does not affect confirming or seeing a baby after the second trimester. 
and usually there's no reason there's so many women who have abdominal scarring for multiple c-sections that have found their baby at six weeks gestation five weeks gestation and the abdominal scarring presented absolutely no problems so from a cryptic pregnancy website they say the cervix and bladder stretch upward and create a cavity echo and a pocket of air between it and the uterine wall for the sake of time I found a study that covers cavity echo and they actually use uterine cavity echo to diagnose. So a uterine cavity echo presents absolutely no problem in finding a baby and I will link that information in the description of this video if you want to look into it further. And then let's quickly discuss the pocket of air. This only really presents a problem in early pregnancy and the possibility of this occurring is very rare. The reasons for you to even have air in your bladder are slim and very minimal. Um, if you have an infection, if you have an indwelling urinary catheter, if you have diabetes, a fistula, a foreign body, or any trauma, those are the reasons why you could have air in your bladder. If none of these apply to you, the odds of air being present in your bladder is very slim. The odds of this pocket of air blocking your baby after the second trimester is slim to none. It may make the head harder to view with an incarcerated uterus due to position, position only, but the body of the baby can be viewed through ultrasound such as the back, legs, arms, torso can be seen. So this pocket of air presents no problem. This is a very hypothetical pocket of air. I would like to, oh, sorry, I, I skipped over that. Um, so an incarcerated uterus requires medical intervention, intervention for the pregnancy to progress healthily and ensure the safe delivery of the baby and ensure the mother's safety because of the position of her uterus. So an incarcerated uterus is not a sufficient explanation for an extended gestational pregnancy because if left untreated, both the mother and baby could die. And the reason I bring this up is because the cryptic pregnancy community always says for cryptic pregnant mothers to stay away from doctors. And that, that's why that presents a problem. Intrauterine growth restriction refers to the inability of the fetus to reach its genetically determined potential size. It rarely, it rarely results in an uncomplicated delivery of a healthy baby. It is a serious condition and babies should be delivered, treated, and monitored by a medical professional. This condition could require intervention and because of this, the pregnancy would then become confirmed through sonogram. If this complication of pregnancy did go to term without confirmation of pregnancy, diagnosis, or treatment, then the mother would definitely require a C-section, like I've said before, in order to deliver the baby safely and ensure the mother's safety. If you think you are experiencing an extended gestational pregnancy due to an incarcerated uterus, I strongly advise that you seek prenatal care for your baby from a doctor or qualified midwife. If you think you may have an incarcerated uterus and you are pregnant, it is important to get prenatal care from a doctor or midwife. The good news is this condition can be treated by these professionals. If you are not pregnant but think you might have an incarcerated uterus, you can easily check this for yourself at home. All you have to do is check the position of your cervix and the location. And I will link some information in the description of this video on how to do that. So I hope this video helps someone. There is a lot of confusing information out there and it is always good to continue to ask questions. Happy day guys. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.